So what this is, as he's drying the rod bearings, uh, so this band on the end of this crankshaft has got adjustables on each end that offset the crank so the rod bearing sets straight and the mains go oblong, I around see. and round. You, so, so you can choose whatever you want to be in the center. That's right, yes. Uh -huh. So he's doing rod bearings right now. Uh -huh. And every time you do this, it's a certain stone, right? With let's say 302 Ford stone on the thing, it's different than a 350 stone, Chevy stone. Is that right? So it's a different width. Every time you change the stone, you have to clean it and balance it so it don't shake. Wow! You can't turn a crankshaft when it's shaking. It runs water on it. Once he grinds all that, we would like to do like a Chevrolet crankshaft. Set him up to do ten crankshafts, do the rod bearings only. Okay, so you're not changing the stone all That's the time. That's right, change up every back or forward, Chevy back and forward. That's expensive. Now what would be, I mean, I wouldn't even have any idea why. Why would there be a different stone for different ones? Different widths. Oh, it's the width. Yeah, not necessarily a different grind, but the width. I see. So some of them are just, even most engines are different widths. Yeah. And then the other one, the other machine is set up for main bearings. And it's got the stone for the main bearing. Okay. So we'd like to do 10, 350 rod bearings, set the cranks down, take them over there and do the main, then we got 10 crankshafts done, complete. Oh, I see. You're going to change it over, we change it over to Ford. Both machines to Ford. Much more efficient that yeah, way. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what we try to do. I got do you. as many as we can, that's all the same. All right. right. You watch him. You get closer here and watch what he's doing. Let's see what he's doing here. He's done. Done? No, it's not. Oh, okay. You got more to go. Yeah. That's a spiral off though. How much how much you got down now? Thirty. Thirty? I mean, yeah, at least about fifteen thousand. This is really fine. It's almost micro. What he's turning here oh. now. Yeah, he's so many turns already and he's hardly not even, Yeah, not near. And he has this instrument set in here. Yeah. See the needle going back and forth? Yeah, I have to keep it straight, but it's still about 10,000 to go. So. Yeah. The spiral bar has to go through it. Okay. So it's yeah. up all the way. He's got a crankshaft, you do the, the worst one. Okay. So if you had to grind that 20 under, then you don't care. You have to grind them all 20 on all. Okay. So you use the first one to establish a, how much you have setting. to cut Yes, it. exactly right. Okay. And, and then they all have to match. The one is back between 20 or 30. Yep. In this yeah. case, I have to go 30. So. They're okay. going 30 on this one. So all, them, all the rod bearings will be 30 under. They all have to match the worst one. Yeah. Okay. This little gauge goes in here and rides on that. Uh -huh. And runs it to indicate exactly where it's at. It's a little bit out of. Yeah, it's a little, little bit out of. Yeah, uh, out of round. Out of round, a little bit. Yeah. That much. When it gets done, it will set right still here. Yeah, that's the one. Have to keep it straight. Yeah. Get closer to the finish line. Yeah, closer to the finish, and he'll get it straight. And this machine is so technical, I think the last thing, he'll probably be the last thousandths or so, he'll actually manually push that into the crank. Oh, uh, so you just, you can't just touching it. it, basically. If I was to turn the machine, if I crank the wheel, it'd be 50 under the time I got uncranked. So I'm not used to doing this. But anyways, you'll just push it into the last one, make it exactly 10. I see. Yeah. Takes a lot of skill, it sounds like. So he, yeah, he's pushing out there a little bit. <laughs> To push it, getting real close. Yeah. He'll get it right down to where it says yeah. set right at zero there. Yeah. So each one of these, he has to offset the crank for different strokes. Uh huh. So it takes quite a while to set the machine up. I bet. Yeah. That's why we like to keep in it. Maybe that's a bunch of 302 Fords, a bunch of 350 Chevys, a bunch of 454 Chevys, and everything else. Yeah. Well, it's quite a deal at certain terms.
a machine like this is about, uh, I think a machine, the new crankshaft machines are maybe 125,000. Yeah, probably a little bit more now. The same with that bigger machine. Now he's got a belt on this one. He can polish the cranks. Oh, okay. The other one does not have that option. So when he gets done with this, he may polish it all. So we don't, and we get it back there, we'll polish it again. Okay. Back up in the shop. The guy that puts, assembles the motors, he's going to give it a little final touch, what he likes. Yeah. Yeah. All these belts. Now what he's going to do here, he's going to maybe... Okay. Answer them. Oh, so wives. those are the mains, the narrow ones? The narrow ones, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so what kind of crankshaft is this, just so we know? 4.6 Ford. 4.6 Ford. Yeah. Oh, wow. The, uh... It's the same width as the Chevy's the 50s and the Oh, that's it the is. Next. Right. Oh, that's and the... you that too. Yeah, okay. The stone's the same width. Yeah. It's a 350 Chevy. Huh. So and he says the same as my flathead Ford. He's going to do my flathead Fords next. May as well. Then I have to give him some the next extra donut? ice cream. <laughs> an extra donut, yeah. <laughs> I have to pay for this. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and this is a bigger machine, see, with a big stone. It's Yeah, it's very big. Wow. Yeah. Really a big, taller stone, maybe about a three-foot stone. And we have rows of stones. And he oh, has a, yeah. a bunch of stones underneath the cabinet here. Oh, here. yeah. The ones he Over probably here. uses all the time. See, there's a whole array of inventory of stones. Now, do you have, is there a maintenance to do with these stones? No, yeah. Puts them in there. He has to refurbish them every one of them. Every time? Every time he puts it in, he's got to resharpen it. No So kidding. it's not vibrating. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's some big ones. Wow. That's, that's, that's all it's like. Those are the yeah. big, big ones. But that's yeah. for this machine, though. This one, yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. So okay. here's. See how big they are there for the for the main main bearings. That one big was a new one. Yeah. Oh man, how much they cost? I don't know. Offer two for one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. So you have different ones. I can see that. Yeah, and is, then you have all these different belts here too for polishing. Yeah, that's for stuff. polishing. All kinds of belts for polishing. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, there's. It's just, uh, it's like the crank, it's Ed's Crankshaft Emporium here. Yeah. I have about, <laughs> I have about 3,500 crankshafts. Is that right? I really do. It doesn't seem like an exaggeration at all. No, it's not. There's so many. And these on this crankshaft shop here, Rack A, is in this book. Oh, they've got the inventory. Is yeah, inventory in this book here, maybe. It's Rack A, and may have so many uh, 265 Chevy cranks. 1010s and 1020s and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, so there's all the engines, and then each one could have a different grind for how much it's been. For, yeah, well, how, how bad the crank is and how good it is. Yeah. Some cranks that are real bad, we just throw them away and jump. Sure. They're not worth doing anything with it. We do have a crank welder there. We used to use it, that orange machine in the corner. Okay. That's a regular welder, wire weld machine. And that's where you can build up the crank? You can build up a crank, yeah, weld it right up and then turn on and turn it down. Okay, you don't do that too much anymore? No, we don't. Unless we do a real rare crank, like a diesel crank. Mm -hmm. if those cranks are maybe four or $5,000. Yeah, okay. And it has to throw out, yeah. But generally, you can. it's better to generally just find a just different one. Generally, it's just to get one. another crank. Yeah, so much. Uh, and then Arizona here, uh, there's so many junkyards and facilities that have crankshafts and stuff. Yeah. 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 I guess, I mean, I know a lot of people sell you engine blocks and sometimes the blocks no good but you keep the crank and work keep it, the crank right? and yeah whatever for other parts so yeah, yeah. yeah yeah huh That's and all really these shelves have crankshafts on them yeah here's they're down there keep too. track of over here's his order sheet where he's got jeep cranks it says here and all kinds of things he's got <laughs> here's some of the crankshafts that oh sorry do we have to do them but he's got plenty of work to do i have to worry about him <laughs> yeah it looks like he's got about four years of work yeah sitting here here's another machine where you might look at uh, yeah here's a table we, for no reason it's a, a, a machinist table it's a marble table and now why would a machinist want a marble well uh, people this thing is correct 
Oh, it's perfectly flat. Perfectly flat, yeah. Okay. And we just have it because I came on to it a while back and it's got adjusters on the legs and make it completely flat. Okay. They kind of see a machine, see a C machine people. Yeah. And they have big machine shops that have tables like this or even bigger. Uh huh. To do their measurements on and do specific specs. This machine, <laughs> we can straighten the crank. Oh, you can straighten them. Yeah, we can straighten the crank. It's got a hydraulic ram underneath it here, sonar, and we can put a dial indicator and roll it in here and make sure it's straight. Because we have to make sure it cranks straight. If we were to turn on and if the crank is bent, and that's not uncommon, I had a crank a while back that was bent on the race car, and so you throw a rod bearing of it, it wedges the rod between the thing, it will twist the crank. Okay. Yeah, bend it. So to straighten the crank, we can actually take 10 thousandths here, 10 here, and 10 here, and make it straight according to the bearings, but still like a banana. Yeah, that still isn't right. It's still out of balance. Right. You'll never balance it. Or it would just flop like that, even though it's straight. Yeah. As far as the bearings are concerned. So then we can straighten it. One time I had a crank here. I tried to straight. I bent it down and leave it back up again and gain like three or four thousandths. Okay. Bend it down again, back up again, gain three or four until I got it almost perfect. It took me several times to bend it. Yeah, because I was bending that crank a quarter of an inch. And it, and it would rebound. It'd spring back up. Yeah. And gain five. Yeah, so the rebound, yeah, you have to do it so incrementally because. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. once you do that the last time and it bounces back to the right spot, you're, you're done, right? It there. won't change after that. It'll no, stay. Really, not really won't. Okay. Yeah, it really won't. Okay. Yeah. So I guess some of the idea here is you have a lot of inventory so if some you're building a certain engine you, you might have a crank for it in stock is that right it's a good chance we have a crank for anything yeah yeah i have a little another building over there full of crankshafts it's too dark to do it yeah oh, that's, we'll have to turn the flashlight on here oh we can still see something wow yeah it's just a big dark cave full of it's an old house. This used to be, right, this is an old, it's an old house. house. yeah. And it's just a, a house full of, uh, Ed's house of crankshafts. It's too dark in here. We can't, we can just make out that there's a bunch more. Yeah. And I'm sure they're organized in some way that I can't figure out. Yeah. Wow. Wow, Ed, that's a lot of crankshafts. <laughs> it's like a... A little, they almost look like little soldiers standing at attention yeah, so, in here. Yeah. Here's so, our 38 crankshafts. Our forge go back to here again. Okay, let's have a look. There's one here. We'll just line them up here a little bit better. Okay. There's two different crankshafts. And therefore, this happens to be a long, straight for... A yeah, 30, Steve called it 30, a long snout. 37 <laughs> to 42 crank. Uh-huh. And this is my 38 crank, short snout. Wow, yeah, and that's, it looks like that's the only difference. Maybe there's something else different, yeah, but that's yeah. about all I can figure. That's what I think. It's rare to have a, a 221, uh, 39 to 41 crank with the two inch journals here. Oh, right. It's not a 239 crank. And here's these funny things on the rear main seal. Oh, we were talking about that. Instead of the rear main seal, the main cap has the opposite of these as the female part. Huh. So the oil has to travel over those humps to get out to be a rear main seal leak. So instead of a seal, they just have a series of obstacles. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Good idea. <laughs> okay. So sometime I've taken and ground these off. Okay. And put a, put a seal on it. Okay, yeah. So you've modified them. Yeah. To, and I, put a rope seal on it. Yeah. I don't think there's much in an engine that you haven't tried to modify at some point. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and I usually have to, to get the job done. Yeah. It's not because I'm here just playing around and, and uh, checking things out and doing it for no reason. Right. I don't like to do anything without reason. Yeah. No, this you know, there's a 239 crank right here. Oh, man. This is a short snout one again. Yeah, that's a short one. And this happened to be a crank. It's pretty good shape. It's a 1010. Okay, that's good. Yeah. The other one was a 2020 on my motor. Uh-huh. I hate that. So this is better. Are you going to use yeah. this one? 
Uh, this is the one Grant's doing with the line bore. Oh, that's the one he's working he's on. Working on was he just line bore it? Yeah, mm -hmm. this customer. Yeah. Yep. So. So yeah. you're probably going to just kind of tidy this up and give it back, huh? Yes, I think we may. This is the mains are really good. Mm -hmm. but I don't know if he's got to turn the mains, rods and mains both. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So good. Well, it's just it's fun to have these flathead crankshafts just sitting around here. It's yeah. Kind of just cool. uh, see, there's so many different ones. The yeah. long nose crankshaft like this is usually 394. You see those Ford 390, huh? Yeah, 390, 360 Fords. Okay. Huh. Yeah. yeah. That makes me think if they're the same crank, that means it's probably the bore that's different on those engines. Yeah, or the stroke could be different, the but stroke, that's that true. family yeah. of motor has a long snout on the front. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You can see them. Okay, that's pretty so. cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, he's got uh, plenty of work to do. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be ninety years old before he finishes. Yeah, All right. <laughs> his brother's here helping. Okay. Or maybe his brother's down to our shop, taking uh -huh. a crank down there or bringing one back here or something. Right. I'm sure there's a, a ready and, uh, a steady flow of back and forth, isn't there? Yeah. I think I've seen that before. They've been working for us for many many years. Trying to crank both of them. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, you obviously uh, have managed to hire very good people to work yeah. with you. It's really good. I think they may have a couple candy bars in the refrigerator, too. Uh -huh. Maybe some ice cream. <laughs> Let's do that. And Thanks for being a part of Barry T's Garage. And if you want some Ed Smith memorabilia, some hats and shirts and all, it's just edsmithspeed.shop. Head over there and have a look.